I don't know why I decided to do this outside. It's like windy. It's like I'm either gonna look like Beyonce or a hot mess. Hey guys, welcome back to Handmade. I'm Liz and this is my backyard. If we keep making these videos from home for long enough, you may just see every room in my house. So since I've been working from home, I've been spending a lot more time outside and I've noticed that my doormat could use a little love. So here it is in all of its mediocre glory. Miles, what do you think? Should we spruce it up? You do? You want to? Are you gonna paint it? Are you looking for some fresh design ideas? I'm gonna be honest, normally I would just replace this every season or two, but I'm trying to limit my trips out and craft with what I already have. So today I'm gonna show you how to clean an old doormat and give it a fresh new look. Let's get started. So before I revitalize this thing, I need to give it a good cleaning and I'm starting by shaking it out. So next I'm going to sprinkle it with baking soda, which will help eliminate odors. I mean, it has been sitting here all winter. Brush the baking soda into the rug with a scrub brush, and you don't want to scrub too hard here because the fibers of the rug are pretty delicate. Let it sit for about 10 minutes, then vacuum with a brush attachment to clean off any residual dirt and the baking soda. So the doormat is looking a lot cleaner, but the design still leaves a lot to be desired. The first step to revitalize it is to add a coat of spray paint. I'm using a light pistachio green, but any light color or white would work great. This is just going to provide a base for the new design. Shake up your paint before you start and hold the can five to eight inches away from the mat. You want to spray until it's evenly covered, which took about three coats for me. And always practice safe oh spray God. painting. <laughs> Don't worry, it was just the camera. I'm fine. My ego is bruised, but I'm fine. So to give the rug a new look, I'm going to use a freezer paper stencil. I'm using a roll of freezer paper and you can get this at the grocery store. I'm going to cut sheets that will fit into my printer and I'm using a sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper as a guide. You can also purchase pre-cut sheets of freezer paper for your printer, but like I said, I'm crafting with what I already have. Before I print on the freezer paper, I'm doing a test sheet. This will tell me what side of paper to put facing up in the tray. A good trick for this is to add an X in the corner. You can see that the X came out on the bottom, so I know to put my freezer paper shiny side up so the design prints on the matte side. Now let's cut this thing out. I'm saving only the letters because this is a reverse stencil, meaning that everything around the letters will be painted. This also makes it a bit easier to cut everything out. If you have detail scissors, this makes the process a lot easier, but of course, any scissors you have are fine. Don't go out and buy something new just for this. Okay, have you figured out what the mat is going to say yet? I'm spelling out, let's stay home because, you know, we all should if we can. I'll link to this template in the comments below. So now it's time to attach the stencils to the mat and for that we'll need an iron. I'm using the highest cotton setting and it's important not to use any steam for this. What's actually happening here is the plasticky coating on the back of the paper is bonding to the mat as you iron over. It works best to go letter by letter, I think. That gives you a really firm bond. The letters are attached, and now I'm going to add a border with some more freezer paper. I'm using a rectangle with rounded edges, but you could do any shape you like or omit it altogether and add the top paint color all the way to the edges. Just a note that I tried to do this with painter's tape, but it really didn't adhere to the mat, so freezer paper is definitely the way to go. And now it's finally time to stencil. I'm using a paper plate as a palette and some black acrylic paint. Make sure whatever paint you use is rated for outdoor use. You can also spray paint the mat again with a different color if you have it. Like any stenciling project, you want to put your brush into the paint, dab off some of the paint before you get started, and then press straight down. It's better to do multiple coats with just a little bit of paint than one coat with a lot of paint. I started the stenciling with a foam pouncer, but it didn't work the paint into the rug very well, so I switched to a paintbrush. Any bristled brush would work great. I did three coats to get full coverage, but that may vary based on the paint you use. Okay, the stencil is dry and it's the moment of truth. Honestly, I'm super nervous, but let's see how it looks. Okay, this is so satisfying. Every time I do a freezer paper stencil, I'm amazed. Ironing on the paper gives you really clean lines. You definitely want to try this. Let's take it outside.
This new and improved design is really going to brighten up my entryway and it felt good to get creative with things I already had on hand. Have you tried any upcycled crafts lately? Let me know in a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!